here what's up ladies and gentlemen true beast trainer episode two we're in the building we'll get stan in here we got our guest ian coming hope y'all got some good questions we got some questions it's true beast trainer man There we go. What's going on, everybody? First of all, we bring on uh, episode one. We bring on a world-class animal chiropractic and veterinarian. And now we're starting to bring on world-class dog trainers. I hope you guys have some amazing questions for Ian tonight, as this is an opportunity for you guys to uh, take advantage of like yeah, almost yeah. like a free evaluation in a way so that's exciting um and and for those who uh left the comment on the post we've got you in the bonus wheel over here as always right so uh, we appreciate your support there yeah we're gonna have some winners tonight but the biggest biggest part of these these episodes man is definitely uh yeah the value that you're gonna get out of out of training. Um, I'm, I'm working on some additional guests. We got another big guest on January 5th, uh, right? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Dr. O is gonna be a resident veterinarian and animal chiropractic uh, for these episodes once a month, and so we've got some heavy hitters on the way. So I'm very excited about that. But um, um, have you invited Ian on let's yet? See. I just spoke to him, so. Convoy you might K9, be waiting right? for the invite. Yep. Send the invite out. And Ian, if you're out there watching, man, go ahead I'll and send invite. Just send a request as well. It could be. All right. Yeah, man. Also, guys, if they have, if you guys have any questions, um, if you want to be entered in the giveaway, go ahead and leave a question in the question box. Uh, tonight's episode, we're going to talk about dog training. Obviously, um, a big topic that we really want to talk about are puppies on the holidays. Uh, you know, the do's and don'ts, um, the understanding the difference between uh, uh, and what you're investing into as a gift. I know some of them are very convenient. A lot of people are willing to, uh, you know, willing to give you know give you puppies for the low because they're trying to get them off hand during the holidays there's a lot of competition but those things are a commitment man it's not just a gift there we you know? go it should come on now there perfect. we go perfect i had to go back in i had to go back in my what's up partner something real quick okay gotcha oh nice How's everything going over there, man? How's the weather over there? I, uh, right here it, in Dallas, man, it's, it's like 12 degrees right now. A whopping 50 probably right now, but it's supposed to get down. The next couple of nights are supposed to get down to like 20 degrees, which is unreal for South Carolina. But it's just been muggy and, you know, super gray lately. But we're still getting it done day in and day out. Just get it done. True. You know? Yeah. The dog. Dogs don't give a damn. The, the dogs don't care what uh, the weather is. They just want to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So you specialize yeah. in working dog breeds, right? Like, I mean, it'd be safe to say, you know, how? Let's. I guess let's start from the very beginning. What got you into dogs? Um, what so inspired you to start dog as training? You know, with Yuri Kodatier, that was like my first apprenticeship that I did. Yeah. And that was about that was three years long. Okay. That's how I found out about. MVP and all the supplements you were doing back then. But but before I went yeah. into my apprenticeship with him, I just like everyone else grew up with dogs. Yeah. And then got a dog while living on my own outside of, out, after school and you know, outside of my parents' house, I got my own place and it was on about two and a half acres. And it was a place that my one of my dad's best friends from growing up uh was had for rent so as soon as we get so my dad shows me the place okay the key from his buddy and he and he hits the doorknob and i will yeah. remember this moment for the rest of my life my dad hits the doorknob turns back to me and says dude you could get a fucking dog out here and i as soon as he said that my mind <laughs> started going 
because I've always clicked with dogs naturally yeah. since I was young. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. shortly after that, it, it had been in my brain, and I was going to culinary school actually at the time because I was uh, – How old were you then? 22 probably. So this is 11 years ago. Okay. And uh, All right. so I, you know, I, I'm going on, and then there was a kid in the neighborhood that was addicted to prescription pills, mm -hmm. and he was breaking into people's stuff. And let's just say that that triggered me to want to get a dog a little bit faster just for the factor of a deterrent. Yeah. Um, he actually pushed through the AC unit. I stayed in like a carriage house on this super nice property, right? So my, <laughs> my place was like, you know, fresh yeah. chickens. And uh, this kid had been breaking into people's garages and cars. It was the type of neighborhood you could leave your stuff open at. And uh, so he pushed through my yeah. AEC unit while I was at culinary school for seven hours, ransacked my, my place. And I was so violated from that because I was, I've never dealt with that before. Right. So that kind of messed with me mentally. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want to go and get a gun yeah. because what that's just going to get taken. If I'm, sure. if I'm not home, I'm gone for hours a day, but the, the house yeah. was set up well enough that a dog would fit the mold perfectly um so i went around okay. and I, I start going crazy with research and breeds and everything like that but i didn't realize that there's more than just buying a breed of dog you have to look into if it's a show line if it's a working line all of yeah. these things about pedigrees that i had been just ignorant to my whole life because i grew up with house dogs we I didn't know you could own a, a working dog that could sure. do Schutzen or French ring or anything like that. Um, so I, I did yeah. some research and they had a pet store called Petland that had all every breed you could imagine <laughs> for sale, right? They had Alaskan clay clays, yeah. whatever they're called. They had beagles, they had basset hounds, and they had this one Rottweiler in this, in this little bin <laughs> and, and, I mean, we're talking like the fiberglass. Like, it was out of a movie how this was set up. And uh, so they had this Rottweiler in there who's three months three months old at the time. I remember I looked at his birthday was okay. September 11th, which I just was like, that's like a weird birthday to have it, with the, the, the history and everything like that. And uh, I was like, dude, this guy, yeah. he was just a cool dog. Yeah. Was, a, as a puppy, and this yeah. is, we'll talk later later about puppy selection and everything like that but as a puppy he was just like everyone gets with german shepherds and stuff now at, at three months old every puppy almost looks the same unless it has such an extreme head type i'm sure you guys deal with with the bullies and everything zach but the, 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 it, it, a rottweiler puppy to me just looked like a rottweiler puppy yeah i learned that the hard way right so yeah. he grew up to have a little pinhead and looked like half a lab or half a doberman but but he was he was my dog that got me started um, and really got my passion going. And he was just yeah. a little simple dog that at the time cost me a good bit of money because I'm a young 20-something. And I'm like, you know, I just – the moment he came home, it was an obsession. Um, yeah. And he wasn't even from anything crazy bloodline-wise, but he was the right dog at the right time for me to use almost as like a stepping stone for where I'm at today. Mm. And mm. – uh, yeah, he, he was a he was a cool little dog. So I lived in that place on the two and a half acres, moved to a much more urban, we could call it neighborhood, and uh, and and that was a dog. Okay. That was an area where I was glowing in the dark over there. I was like the only white person in the whole neighborhood with my roommate, and it was crazy. Zach, crazy. you know what he's was, talking about. <laughs> but everyone, none of these people in the whole neighborhood knew who I was. Yeah, they knew who this dog was. And because he, he would he would go crazy yeah. in the yard, which at the time I thought was confidence, yeah. right? which I later learned was more fear reactivity uh -huh. and all this stuff. But he would go out of uh, the second floor window and, uh, and he would perch on this little, uh, like a front patio roof, basically. And he would just mean mug everybody, bark at everybody. Dudes are walking up and down the street and like starting to want to go around the other way. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, the dog looked like he was yeah. going to jump off the second store to come get somebody. So, and he was crazy in the car, 
really chill, but no one could really like approach the car. And at the time, I thought I had King Kong. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought I had. I thought I had the dude. You know? Yeah. And he only weighed seventy-five pounds as a Rottweiler. That's like a mouse. So, but he. I thought he was the coolest thing ever. I took him to house parties. I took the dog everywhere. And uh, as I'm getting more and more involved with the dog, I'm wanting to learn more as and better myself just as a pet owner at the time. I wasn't training the dog. He, he was just yeah. a dude. And, we, and he went everywhere with me. And then I start doing more research and I'm like, well, why doesn't he do what some of these other Rottweilers are doing? Because this is when YouTube was just starting to have some content. And it wasn't anything like we have today with yeah. the social media stuff. And uh, yeah. so I, I start looking and I'm like, man, as he started to mature, he didn't have that, that super wide uh, like facial structure and head type. And it started, it started to like mess with me a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, damn, what, the, what did I buy? So then I, I got crazy about uh, yeah. looking at the history of the dog. End of the day, the dog was like some puppy mill Rottweiler, obviously, from a pet store. But, uh, but he was everything yeah. that I, I needed him to be at that time. As I got, got, you know, crazier and crazier researching the breed and just dogs that can do protection uh, work efficiently, Mm -hmm. I found my mentor yeah. who I lived in Pittsburgh at the time. I moved across the country to Washington state, uh, closer to, closer to Portland, Oregon, Okay, but like three hours, basically South of Seattle. And, uh, just gotcha. like crazy with that guy for three years, loved every minute of it. He got thrown right in the fire from the get go. But that dog that I got from that pet store, I, I couldn't bring him with me. The, the guy was such a purist with the Rottweilers. He said, dude, I can't have that dog on my property, basically. And I'm like, he, he said, I can't let someone think that that's out <laughs> of mine, right? So I left that dog with my at-the-time roommate, yeah. who the dog had basically grown up with from the day I brought him home. It was my best friend at the time. Uh, went out to, to do stuff yeah. with Yuri for three years. We can go into detail about that. We were doing everything. Yeah, I kind of want to do, you know, so, you know, we, we, you know, and we, we obviously talk about entrepreneurship and one of the things that Zach and I, you know, we commonly talk about is, you know, giving value yeah. first to relationships and stuff like that. And so when it comes to apprenticeship, I, we always tell people, man, if you really want to start, you know, working with somebody, go, especially like any dog trade, training or, you know, any get, you know some advice from a kennel yeah. person. First. Yeah. Yeah. You go, Hey, what can I do? What can I do work for you for free? Like there's so many people out there that I, even as a business owner at the level that I, I'm at, I'm, at, I'm still looking at like, man, if I could go work for Andy exactly. for free, Andy for selling at first form, you know, for free I for a year, I would go, I man, have. I would do that I hand over fist everything. 12 hours a day. That's basically what I did. So how did you get with, yeah, so I guess my question is, how did you end up getting with Yori and what did you have to do to actually start so being a princess I by him? I thought about the apprenticeship situation because there was a, a, a special on 60 Minutes with a guy named Mike Suttle, who does a lot of Dutch Shepherds in Malinois. And he was doing something with a guy named Mike Ritland, who's also in Texas where you're at. And it, he basically, they were okay. talking about working dogs and stuff. And I go, well, damn, this Mike guy's in Lewisburg, West Virginia. He's four hours tops from Pittsburgh. Yeah. I look him up online. Gotcha. He had a little seminar a couple weeks later. Like everything was just starting to flow quick. And I went down and did a little trainer's course and learned how to do some marker training and work with puppies, which is my bread and butter now. Um, but when I was down there, I asked, okay. him, I'm like, Hey, I, I did basically what you would do with Andy. I said, dude, I'll, I'll drop everything. I'll move to the little middle of nowhere at this dude's place. I'm like, dude, I'll get a little apartment. Yeah. And I was like crazy energy. And it almost like made him like take a step back. He was like, Oh dude, like, yeah. I don't need to, I don't need to date you. You know what I mean? But I was just, it was coming out of my ears how anxious I was for all this stuff. So, <laughs> and I start asking him if he knows anybody. Yeah. He kind of didn't really give me any clear answers. So I went in my own and I just start looking up Rottweiler guys and protection dog stuff. And I found my mentor, my first mentor, Yuri. Called him. We have very okay. similar high energy, like to talk a lot personalities. Uh, yeah. You've known him for years, so you know exactly what he – he's a, quite the character. Uh, he, he's either loved or hated for his personality. Yeah. So, um, so sure. I, I, I start talking with him for a little bit, and he tells me to, you know, 
you know, hey, I'll get back to you. And he basically calls me back and says, hey, come out, fly across the country, meet my family and my my wife and kids. Yeah. And, and just let's see how you are. Yeah. He could tell I was crazy. I, I mean, I was I was so persistent. It was it was annoying. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I mean, yeah, see, I, I'm, that's how you and but that's I'm how you got to be, guys. man. Whatever. 815. I've had a long ass day. And I'm still coming with this energy at 8.15, right? So I yeah. get to his place. The moment I get there, he's working a dog. He had a, a buddy of his from the Marines pick me up. And we start doing some stuff. And uh, we hit it off immediately. The kids, the wife, I mean, everything. I was like smoking cigarettes at the time, Marlboros to be exact. And uh, he said, <laughs> hey, there's no smoking. I'm like, cold turkey, quitting cigarettes. Like, dude, it was full stop to everything i'm i'm in whatever whatever you tell me to do yeah. i'm a thousand percent involved um it, it was a crazy yeah. type of loyalty that most people you don't really see anymore i i think at least but he was when i went yeah. out there this guy was ex-secret service uh licensed sniper okay i mean special forces everything crazy <laughs> yeah and basically i I was yeah. Like, well, he trained. Out, you know what I mean? He, he trained like the wild guy. Yeah, he's known. He he trained uh, all the you know the dogs over for the military yeah. for, he was for, the in Belgium. Chief, Yuri so was the chief you know, like canine instructor, and people don't understand how serious this is. He was the chief canine instructor for okay. the Belgian special forces, and they're basically like their whole military program. He was like the youngest that they've ever had with it because yeah. he got involved with dogs when he was 12. Yeah. He got involved with dogs at like 22. So he already had a 10-year jump on most of us. Yeah. And being that he's a Belgian guy, it, it's like in – like how we go and have our hobbies here, they go to the dog club three, four days a week. Yeah. It's religious. They eat dinner there. Like that's their life over there. It's their favorite thing to do. They, they're at work all day working regular jobs, most of these people – in dog clubs and get off work, spend two hours with the family and go to the dog club. And it's, it's working hard for real. But, but Yuri ran a kennel with hundreds yeah. of dogs, all Belgian Malinois. He was the first guy to okay. start bringing in spaniels yeah. in for their tracking and stuff like that. Like he is yeah. things that are unreal. They were like some of the first guys to start jumping out of helicopters and having, having dogs strapped to them. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. I mean, like these were the guys, guys that were getting that stuff done way back um and people don't realize yeah. that, like how this stuff they just see a little clip now and they're like oh i'm gonna go try that he was yeah. one of the guys that started jumping off of walls and belaying down from them and realizing hey we need to put a muzzle on these dogs because as soon as they jump back the dogs are like clacking at their face and stuff. so like these are so I, was, <laughs> I was basically blessed to hit it off so well with this guy and let him really accept me in. I made next to nothing for three years. I had no social yeah. life. There was there was no life at all other than this kennel that I'm basically running with 50 dogs at it. I get there. There's there's puppies on the ground. Yeah. I, two month a month later, there's 14 puppies on the ground. I mean, we were just having litters and doing protection dogs, and I was basically a sponge for three years. And then once I was done with that, I went and lived in Europe for a little bit in the Netherlands and some time in Germany and start started my own operation once I came back from that. But I wanted to go network basically in Europe for a little bit after I got my feet wet with that apprenticeship. Yeah. No, I mean, I think like Stan said, man, a lot of people don't realize the actual sacrifice it takes sometimes to actually put yourself in leverage positions. Right. So, you it's you want to start a business, in. but yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to sometimes forget about the money and just do that sacrifice of like you know the time, the energy. But coming out of it, like you said, you learned enough to be able to start your own endeavor. I I can't agree with that more. So the the problem is everyone wants the finish, and I say this about dogs too. People want it. People. People want their yeah. two-month-old puppy to act like a two-year-old dog. Yeah. Right off the bat. They want it to start yeah. being grown. They don't they don't want to waste any time. It's the same as as far as putting in the time with yourself, with you know, your career. People don't want to uh Yeah. People don't, don't want to be patient. 
and pick up poop for three years. You know, I spent yep. two hours every morning cleaning. Yeah. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even just that too, you know, like, you know, it's a daily commitment, you know, you know, especially right now with Christmas and the holidays and you specialize in pups. So you probably are, I don't know, like you're probably anticipating a huge, I, and I could be wrong, but you're, some anticipating some huge opportunities, probably maybe in January, February or March where they're like, shit, I got this new puppy. I didn't realize this was on, a massive yeah. commitment, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, we need some training. We need to know how to communicate. And I, I was thinking about today. I was sitting in the car, and I was like, "Man, one of the most detrimental things that's happened to dogs is that we've humanized them, or we try to humanize yeah. them as a culture, right?" And their definition of love is completely different than our definition of this, love. It has such a good point to be made. Yeah, on I mean, that. And I think about, since since you're in the fitness industry, basically, uh, you're like the leader in the fitness industry for dogs. Think about it with when you give a dog a treat. When we think of getting something from someone, if I if I give you a piece of a pizza, if I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, have at the pizza, have as much as yeah. you want, or I just give you a slice, like we think more yeah. is more. The fact that you give a dog a treat at all should be enough for that dog, right? But people think I need to get him the biggest milk yeah. bone or whatever. Yeah. Dude, if yeah. I if I if I bought those <laughs> bones, which I don't because I want healthier stuff, I'd be breaking yeah, yeah. the hell by ten pieces. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Or them giant ass raw hides that, you know, like yeah. the They're death of you know, here's a giant poison, yeah, I'll grab a piece uh, of poison log before I do that. Yeah. Wait, uh, dude, I'll go grab yeah. the, they think I'm crazy over at the deli counter at Publix. I'll go in there and I'll get, I'll be like, what's on sale lunch meat wise? Yeah. And I'll grab a thing of lunch meat and I'll walk up to yeah. every kennel at the house and just feed them through the thing. Like, yeah. Dude, the fact that they get that interaction with you is great. And if you're buying a puppy and you're about to get a puppy and you're listening to this, yeah, let's start building yeah. engagement through food yeah. before you do anything. I, if I even fart, my dog is looking like I'm about to give it something. Because I've built up so much engagement with that dog. Yeah. Now, they're not lacking independence because of that, but mm -hmm. I have enough reception with my dog yeah. where if I say something, their head is on a swivel. It doesn't matter what dog I bring out. They're all doing the same thing stuff because I'm raising yeah. them all with that structure in place. Yeah, so, you know, uh, with that being said, you know, what would be the common sense? Because there's a lot of common misconceptions, right? Like you shouldn't have your dog crated all the time. But and now it seems like with social media, we're starting to make a, 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 a move towards the right direction. You know, kit, crate training is not bad. You know, uh, mm -hmm. tools are not bad. You know what I mean? So what would be some of the steps? Is if initially someone gets a pup, what would be your step A through I, I would C? Get for first three crate. steps. I would get an X pen, like a – octagon pen that you can get at any pet store basically um because you don't okay. want to just always have the dog lock. that's the part of the problem too is it, it, you're either freedom for all the time with with having the dog out of the crate or your your dog is almost crated too much mm -hmm. so i would put an x i would put a okay. crate somewhere in the house near a door to where you're going to go paw to your dog and i would put an x pen in an area where the dog can be observant of what's going on and not in the laundry room, listening to everything and barking because he's not involved with the action. Yeah. The dog is in an ex, a little X-Pen and they're an eight-week-old puppy. They can walk around a little bit. They can interact. You can put stuff in there for them to, to stay busy. I'll take an old Amazon box, a couple random like rope toys or something like that, and let that dog see things. Um, but, but then I'm also yeah. doing 20-minute increments in the crate. Maybe maybe I'll load up a Kong while I'm in there with some healthy meat and beef tallow or whatever I what, whatever I want to throw in there. Um, but making things positive. Sure. I don't want the dog to think of a crate as a negative place. I feed my dogs in the crate. Yeah. I feed them in their kennel or yep. if they're in the crate here. Um, client dogs the same. A client dog will come to my house and within three days start to understand the, the way things are going over here. Yeah. From all the freedom that they're used to having. Okay. But with puppies, I would I would get them yeah. used to the X Pen, get them used to the crate, and I would start using something that is easy for them to eat and start working on, on teaching the dog its name, honestly. 
Like, I don't need to teach it yeah. anything yeah. fancy. I just need to walk backwards and just pay my dog with something not hard like a milk bone or some of these crazy treats that they sell out there, exactly. but uh, something more like a piece of hot dog or some ground beef. Yeah. Well, what if you ever see me with milk bones? Yeah. Bro, yeah. <laughs> bro I mean, milk bones are trash. <laughs> no, every time you say milk bone, he keeps saying my name. Like, They're so bones. trash. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Just bro. bring, bring it away. Tractor this. supply. I take this shit off oh, the shelf. The, the, the 10,000 count for five ninety nine of uh, milk bones. You, Clearly, no, that's got to be great quality ingredients. Speaking of tractor supply, I really, it's like I always feel like a dick when I go because when we get to the counter, I know it's about to happen. They got some Can trash ass. And I'm like, nope. 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 Oh, he doesn't like you it. You can't have he it. Doesn't <laughs> like the treat. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, know, oh, he doesn't like the My dog it. would be same car before we get home. Yeah. <laughs> right? That old ass treat. <laughs> same thing There's at Home bad. Depot, too. When you walk Here's in that. The problem. The, yeah. So I live in the South, right? So yeah, I just too. kill people with kindness. I just kill everybody with kindness. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. We're training. Oh. Yeah. And, and that's another thing that people don't realize when they start getting dogs is they think the dog needs to be everybody's friend. And then they wonder why their dog wants to pull yeah. towards everybody. And they're like, well, he's not aggressively pulling towards him across the street. He just wants to say hi. And it's like, yeah, because you let everyone say hi to him who has, who's has who got no value to him in reality, yeah. you know? Yeah. I pull my dog out of the car. He ain't yeah. looking at anybody. He's not looking at anybody but me because they yeah, bring but, no yeah. value to him unless I make them valuable. That goes back to what Stan was saying about a lot of times it's just people don't know how to interact or how to actually – you know, be around the dog without having to touch it, play, oh, it's so cute, and it's like, no, lady, stop. Yeah. That's a culture here, though, you know, like, and it's just kind of like there's a there's a delicate line when you think about it from being the handler and how you communicate to that person because some people are dicks. Oh, don't pet my dog, and you know what I mean? Like, when it's kind of like you could make a different, you know, make a better approach, you know. I'm 5'11", 6 foot, I got a bald head and a beard. I Someone could look at me and be like, oh, you know what I mean? I yeah. kill people with kindness so much. I go, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, we're training right now. Like, do it in a nice way. I I was raised to treat people how I want to be treated. Yeah. If I come crazy at someone, or someone comes crazy at me, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna respond with a certain type of way. We don't need to get in a big argument. You know what I mean? Well, especially if you're if you're a training business, I I look at those as opportunities educate, to educate you know people. communicate yeah. your brand. You know, they go, well, yeah, and educate. Well, well, why don't yeah. you let people touch? And I go. Because I want the dog to realize in all environments, I'm the one. I'm if I if I need a response yeah. from that dog, I need them to fall through with it. So if, if they're worried about everything in the environment, I go and track. Yeah, like, I bring toys in there. I, I go crazy. They I spend so much money in there. They don't care what I do in there. But but the point is to bring the engagement. To you. All right. So. Sure. Yeah, you you definitely want to be be the most exciting thing mm-hmm. from what I always hear, you know. And uh, so um, we've got a bunch of questions on the post, so I'm going to start asking some of those questions. And then, guys, if you haven't left a question in the question box below for Ian, this is your opportunity to go ahead and still do that. I'll still enter you guys in a spinner wheel. But um, can, are you – Zach, are you on your phone? Can you see questions too on uh, the comment post? I can post? pull it up on my – I'll start asking them, and then uh, we've got a lot of people asking you guys questions. I mean, asking you questions, Ian. And um, guys, again, you know, this is your opportunity. If you have any questions about dog training, building a personal relationship with your dog, or building a better relationship with your dog, this is your opportunity. This is why we bring on trainers like Ian who bring massive value to the world, you know. And so um, he's taking his time out to come on here uh, as a guest to give you guys value. So if you guys have questions, ask away. It makes it a lot easier when you ask ask him in the question box. Plus, you're going to be entered in the giveaway. Will, which we'll be giving away product short here shortly. But uh, I'll go ahead and ask the first one, Zach, off the comment post. Um, Ashley Martis, 78. Ian, how can I get my shepherd not to whine at the top of its lungs at me while it's the in its kennel? The problem is people fixate too much on the dog while it's in the kennel. The dog needs to learn that it's not getting anything out of whining. So if I have a dog in the yeah. kennel, I'm not going to go over to it and keep talking to it to try and coax it to, to relax a little bit. I'll ignore you completely. I'll, I'll turn the TV on. I'll turn the music yeah. on, throw my headphones in, whatever I need to do to let you realize that it, it, I know you just went out to the bathroom. I know you've been fed and watered. You're just trying to get out too much. Um, and sometimes it can be something simple yeah. as taking a dog from a black wire kennel 
and putting it in something like a Rufflin that's enclosing it and relaxing it more. Shepherds are notorious whiners. I have a ton of them, so I know exactly what she's talking about. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll put a dog in a Rufflin. I'll take a blanket and put it over top of a wire kennel if need be. Sometimes little things like that can calm my dog yeah. down. Or, like I said before, occupying it with a Kong and making that a positive experience in the crate. The first couple times you introduce a crate to a dog, they're yeah. like, I don't want to go in there. I'll throw a couple pieces of food in there. I'll put food in the back of the kennel and make them just be occupied so that they think it's positive in there. The, most of the time, when you have a dog whining in a kennel, whether it's an outside pen, a yard, or a crate, the dog has what we call barrier frustration. So the dog is being basically held back from what it thinks it might be wanting to be involved with, and it starts to vocalize to try and get you to come over and open that gate. If you're in, if I'm in a cell and I'm going to be like, guard, guard, let me out. I'm bored as hell in here. Yeah. Not everyone's <laughs> yeah, sitting yeah. quiet in there. So that's the way I look at it. Just make it a positive place. Stuff a Kong with some healthy, healthy meat and stuff. Put it in the freezer. Give them something to occupy themselves with so that they think of it positively. That makes a lot of sense. Um, one of our guests is coming on January 5th, Got to Train. You probably know who he is, Ian. Um, what was your favorite part on being on the other side of the pond? Now, I usually don't ask questions on, on here, but we've got a couple blue checks and stuff over here. So definitely want to uh, you know, give those some attention. Yeah. The yep. lifestyle is different over there. The lifestyle is different. So, lifestyle. Like I said, I, I stayed with friends over there for, you know, three months, as long as you can go without a working visa. And – I'm staying with people who yeah. are living the Dutch lifestyle, the German lifestyle. I was right. I was, I was so close to Germany. Okay. We could literally, which we did, we would go buy our groceries in Germany in cigarettes or whatever they had. It, it, gas was cheap over there. So we would yeah. dip over there. So their whole culture basically is wake up, get their daily work done. Cause these people work actual jobs. Not everyone's a dog trainer over there that's that's the misconception yeah. we see all these great dogs coming from there that's these people's like hobby their their number one thing like people have the gym here people have hiking here their breakfast lunch and dinner when they're not on the clock at work is dogs so they have their their, their kennel or two in their okay. small backyard most of these people basically live on top of each other in row homes over there um so they work their daily job and their release is going to their dog club i was studying kmpv when gotcha. i was over there and learning about the dutch bloodlines and i'm a big dutchy guy i love them uh my my personal dog is a dutchy i bred yeah. dutchies i bred my personal dog but when i was over there it was just seeing how these people grind yeah you know like we talked about before that's all yeah. they're doing they don't do things for clicks over here like we yeah. do over here sometimes I'm guilty of it. I like to edit some videos and make some content, but they don't, they don't even think about that. They're not out yeah, here recording exactly. everything. They might record, Hey, the guy just fell down when the dog did a long bite. Ah, do another one. Let's see if, how it looks at round two. You know, what, they're just all about the yeah. dog over there. I've contemplated multiple times selling everything I have here and moving over there with a couple dogs and just trying to, you know, be involved. That's how cool yeah. the culture is. Uh, it, it, and there's some yeah. jealousy and egos and stuff over there, but it's nothing like over here. These, they just, those dudes just grind. That's why they're so well known. And that's why their dogs are, I mean, if you think about the Netherlands, right, it's a third of the size of Washington state, which is the state that I did that apprenticeship in for three years. It's a small country, yet they're putting dogs all over this planet from China to the U S to every place you can imagine. <laughs> it's like. Like the Dagestanians <laughs> taking over the UFC, <laughs> you know, getting deployed all over the place. And yeah, people don't realize, you know, all these dogs are are stemming from such a small little country where these guys take it so seriously. I mean, I it's hard to equate it to anything like what we're well, used to over here. Yeah. Well, I think you, you hit it right on the head right there. Is like they take it's it so serious, you know, like so. All right. So we got another question from uh, – this is a blue check, 12H Hernandez, who's a professional basketball player. Um, how to get my dog to stop pulling? I put the leash 
on and she pulls, but I the take reason, it off and she walks and beside I me. I think that a lot of the times that dogs are pulling is because it's like opposition reflex, right? So you make that tension and you're, hold, you're restraining the dog. And when the dog is on tension, it, whether it's on a flat collar or on a harness, mm -hmm. they want to pull forward. It, there's no way that you're going to correct the dog. You could just keep yeeting it back as much as you want, but the dog's not registering that it's doing something wrong. I would get a prong collar, fit it the right way. I'm a balanced trainer, guys. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm marking you as purely positive. <laughs> if, I were, if, I were to just, if I were to just pay a dog with food, I'm going to pay it for pulling, basically. If yeah. I give a correction and let the dog yeah. know that, that we're yielding and we're hitting red lights on things and, and the dog is going to be manageable and walking at my left side in a heel position, it, you know, that's all you got to do. Then the dog's going to go with however much leash that you give it. Um, I, I can teach a dog leash pressure very fast, and then it just takes conditioning on top of it. So I would find someone, like, in that area. If he, is he in Texas? Okay. Well, uh, no, I think he's in Mexico. There's plenty of places, if we, if we communicate, that we're, you can find someone in your area who can help just get you started with how to use the prong collar the right way. Every time someone tells me that their dog pulls, I show up to do the eval, and the dog's on a harness or on a flat collar, like it's like it's about to go hog hunting with a two yeah. wide flat collar. And I'm like, there's no way your dog is only <laughs> understanding what the green light is. There's no yellow yeah. or red involved. So Yeah. I don't think people understand how important that the 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 ability to be able to communicate with your dog, you know, especially I for the I remember at the beginning, I I mean I used probably like, you know, when I first had got into bullies and stuff, I had a man like instantly man i had like this flat collar on dogs and it, i had a few dogs that pulled it but as instantly as soon as i put a prong collar on it, it was like yeah it instantly stopped literally and i was like They're oh important. tools and, are important we get caught <laughs> yeah. up in a lot of the time i think people get caught up in especially when they first like what i did when i had my first roddy dude i bought the fattest toughest looking stuff that i could find and i just thought it looked cool and i thought well i've seen other dogs wear these types of things and, and not do the behaviors that my dog was doing, which was pulling and doing all the, you know, run, run of the mill stuff. Um, so yeah, basically we need to look at what the road is to get to where the finished product is. Like I said, the two month old people want to all act like a two year old. Um, we need to just take the steps that it takes to get to that because you'll send a dog home with a prong collar. Mm -hmm. And the people go, now, how, how long, how many years does he need to have this on? And I'm like, it doesn't hurt to be able to communicate to the dog with a tool. It's not like I'm ripping their head off. By the yeah. time a dog leaves a month board and train with me, the dog, I, I could hand the leash to a five-year-old to walk the dog. You know what I mean? It, that, that's what people don't understand. Yeah. It's just a communication. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Are you asking I'm on the, the question box or on the, the post? Uh, the post. Okay, let's do the post. Yeah, we'll knock out the post and then we'll get in the question box. Alrighty then. Let's see. K9 Jaeger says, how to reintroduce a female dog to the pack who's been separated due to a fighting other females? A leash. Never just let dogs just mix in with each other, especially after you've had some aggression involved with other mm -hmm. animals. Whether it's a goat or a dog, I want to introduce everything slowly again on a leash. And I want to put a, typically a prong or a slip lead on to where if there is something that needs a correction to where the dog can realize what the objective is here. And it's not just a free for all. Um, you can still have some control over the situation. You might want to use a muzzle. You might not want to use a muzzle. It can kind of depend. But you don't want to just bring the two dogs off nose to nose and have a face off just walk them next to each other and make corrections yeah. as need be. And just kind of, you might need to micromanage a little bit. Let's be honest. Yeah. You know I, mean? I would probably say, uh, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. especially like if there's I unfinished business. Say, Sorry, too, like, don't do it in the house for the first time. Don't do it in a tight area. Yeah. Do it in an open area. Just take them <laughs> just around. Bring them out in the front yard. Just, let them scrap yeah, it out. Just, just take them and walk them side by side. You know what How I mean? about this? Yeah. Different people holding the leash and just walk. Put, put a, 
So don't put a high value no. bowl of food don't on the ground and throw them in the don't bed. Throw a marrow bone on the ground. It's <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll solve it. They can hug afterwards or whatever. You know. Yeah. All right. Uh, Althea underscore the underscore Mally underscore eight. What you started out. What okay? So when you started out, I think what was the failures that stumped you? to keep going. So basically what did you fail at that inspired you? To engagement. On? I, what what I, then, engagement was, eng I always had good engagement, but I didn't realize how much more I could have been paying my dog for the good behaviors that he was doing. Yeah. I was like, I was like most people. Yeah. I would just tell my dog when he was doing wrong and not always praise him when he's doing well, because if you, if you learn how to balance that and make it more like, Hey, that was good. That's what I want you to do. Then I showed them, you know, appreciation for yeah. bonding and, and affection and stuff like that. Uh, and now I would do it with food. Whereas before I would be, I would praise him when he did well, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, I, I was a little heavier on, eh, eh, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, it's almost like what people do with their first kid. Yeah. Not that I have kids, but I feel like I was a first child. So I feel like I got a little bit heavier corrections you know, what yeah. I mean? whether it was a whooping or whether it was, a yeah. Normal. Uh, and then there's my brother who, you know, could do no wrong basically, yeah. but, but it, it takes that first <laughs> dog for you to kind of get your feet wet and see what works and what doesn't. Another problem is, is people kind of always compare a dog to a dog they had 20 years ago. You know, that's a, that's the biggest thing I could, I hear all the time. Yeah. Well, my old shepherd never did this. Yeah. This ain't him. This ain't him. And I have the same, they don't, don't even have the same yeah. bloodline. That yeah. you take my brother and I, who have the same parents and are three years apart, we're complete off. We're best friends, but personality-wise, he's like a mute yeah. when I'm around. He doesn't even talk. I'm much more dominant in the room than he is, and he's much more reserved. And everyone yeah. loves my brother, but he's the quiet. Guy, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it totally it's makes. I, it's almost the same dynamic, man. You know. In just about yep. every every situation. Uh, to kind of what, what, next, says, what age is best to start training for a guard dog? Two Cedar. That's two Cedar or two yeah, C see, the, Idaho. The handles Simba. be too much for me, bro. You put the government <laughs> name, I'll probably be better at reading it. But <laughs> see, it, see if she responds to this. But ask her what breed that the dog is, because that's a huge factor. If I've got a if I was gonna say, Looks like a bully. If I got a Malinois, we could start at six yeah. weeks, eight weeks old, and I already know what I have. You know what I mean? When a, before a puppy leaves the litter, um, if it's a bully or something like sure. that, I would wait until after teething. I would build a, a bold personality in the dog to where it's just confident in all environmental settings. It doesn't need to be dominating things, but it just needs to be content. And then I would start yeah. probably eight yeah. to ten months once the teeth. Everyone says that a dog's done teething at like, like when the puppy teeth fall out. I let the teeth root themselves up yeah. in the gums, and then we start doing bite work. Uh, a good friend of mine, another okay. mentor of mine, who's one of my club members, Teresa, uh, she's like, dude, I, I'm not starting a dog in protection that I already know has good genetics until it's 10 months old yeah. at earliest. Because, because why, why would I yeah. want to make a negative connotation towards biting? If the teeth, it takes one tooth to not be rooted all the way to have a dog want to, you know, not bite that well. So I would let it start until yeah. 10, 12 months old, just like I would with a Rottweiler. Some Rottweilers you let go until they're 18 months. And then, you you know, you start teaching them how to stand up for themselves. Because some of these breeds mature slower than others. Mm -hmm. But all I would do is just make that puppy as bold as humanly possible and let it, you know, let it carry the if it okay. picks up my croc, I'm not going to cause a fit, right? Like build build some possession, build some desire to walk around with stuff, and and just start from there, and then find a good trainer and hit the ground rolling. But it takes the right type of dog. Not every dog is, and I learned that with that first Rottweiler. Not every dog is built the same. So you need some genetics on your side if we're talking protection. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That's great. So Aries, God of bullies. How do I get my dog to know where it's uh -uh. okay? I don't think oh. so. Did I, did I already read that one? Okay. 
uh, okay, how do I get my dog to know where it is okay to potty when we're in a public setting, store, I give airport, it as many opportunities as possible. So before I even walk into the store, I'm finding a patch of grass. Mm -hmm. I'm finding some mulch. I'm finding somewhere where it's kosher to pee, basically. Um, and then, I, then I'll take my okay. dog in the store. And then before we get back in the car, if I've been in Home Depot for 20 minutes and I'm walking around with this dog who might be churning up a piss, we're going to hit that on the way to the yeah. truck as well. Um, before I throw you in your, in your uh, car kennel, I'm going to give you another opportunity. The more opportunities, the better. And I'm not talking to the dog. Well, I, I say once free, I let the dog go to the bathroom. I'll verbally praise it in, in a calm fashion while the dog does go to the bathroom in that yeah. said spot. Uh, because I don't want to get too happy for the dog and throw it a verbal party like a cheerleader and have the dog stop going to the bathroom because he's like, oh, man, you're really excited for me. I'll calmly, <laughs> say, I'll calmly tell him he's a good yeah. boy. And then when he's done, we walk to the truck and it's we make it business as usual. Yeah. But the more repetitions with that stuff, I think the better. Yeah. So opportunities. What's up, Jay? Jay from uh, P PK9. He, uh, we're definitely brothers. gonna bring him Let's on as a guest happen, too, man. man. This kid, yeah, he's, oh, yeah, he's killing it, man, he's over running, there. He's like, uh, he's got so much value. San, San Francisco. <laughs> and Tennessee, yeah, yeah. He's got like three. He's in multiple states now. The the boy's franchise. He's a franchise boy. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, Melissa nice. D. Everidge says. What's the best way to help a nervous dog become more comfortable being touched by a stranger, not bothered in their presence until they try to touch? Start bringing some food in the mix. Hand that person some food. Do it when you know that your dog doesn't have a full belly and just make other people a little bit more positive in mm -hmm. that sense. And don't let all these people up, run up, come up to the dog in such a way. Let the person be relaxed. Walk around the person a little bit and let them become interested. Let the dog think it's a good idea rather than I'm pressing this on you so much. Because if you do it too much and you good boy or good girl, the dog verbally, the dog will be getting marked with a verbal marker in a stressful state. And they'll think, man, I'm supposed to be stressed. You're telling me it's okay. It's okay. Your dog doesn't realize when you say it's okay. Yeah. Here's the tone that you're saying it in. Yeah. I could call my dog a bad name and say, Hey, you little, Little turd. Oh, what's up? <laughs> yeah, he's, and he, oh, yeah. he's still gonna wax his tail because <laughs> yeah. he's hearing he's hearing the yeah. tone that I'm saying it in, not not what, what I'm saying. Yeah, we think our dogs understand the language. I teach yeah. dogs in like five different languages, right? Uh, like not all mixed in, but like I can teach a dog in French, German, Dutch, whatever, and I, they under yeah. understand the repetition of the tone. They don't understand what language it is or whatever. They, they know the consistency and the repetition that they've been paid on. So I would just let a dog just get paid from that person and relax about it. And every, it doesn't need to be a verbal party. Calm with the, those dogs. You need to be chill with. Yeah. Because if you bring them up too much in a vocal, uh, in a vocal reward, the dog's going to kind of go and think that it needs to be acting skittish to get praise. Yeah. That's something me and Stan were talking about the other day that, a lot of times people don't even realize that without talking, you're still communicating to your dog. I picked up, a, I, I had these spaniels. I have, I breed Cocker Spaniels every once in a while as well for hunting and detection dogs, right? And Stan and I were just talking about Casper, the father to that litter. These, I, I had to take them to a vet appointment today. And I met a client who we met halfway because I live an hour from mm -hmm. them. Uh, I, I, I had to pick up the dog and do an eval basically in the parking lot. And I didn't say a word to this dog the whole time. This dog didn't know his yeah. name when he came out of the car. Obviously, it was a doodle, right? Everyone wants a doodle now. So it was another yeah. another year old doodle. Your favorite. Right? Zach's, Zach. Zach's creme de la creme. He's, mm -hmm. probably, got, he's probably got one licking his feet right now. <laughs> I'll and, <let> me. Uh, <laughs> the doodle boy, the doodle bandit. So we, we basically did this eval and the thing, and I – the dog was on a harness. They're wondering why it's pulling. And I said, basically, what do you think these sled dogs wear? They're not wearing collars. They're not wearing slip leads. Yeah. They're wearing harnesses to pull. They're, there's no brakes, right? So, so basically, I did this whole eval, yeah. had this dog jumping in the back of the, uh, of the truck bed and all these things that I <laughs> didn't want to do initially just through leash 
communication. I said nothing to the to the dog whatsoever. I wasn't. Come on, let's. I, there was no treats involved. I was just showing these people and proving my worth as a dog trainer how we can communicate with nothing being said and basically showing my worth as as what I, they're about to invest in. You know, some good money into their dog with me. I've got to. Sh I, and I do that at every evaluation. I'll yeah. Bring a dog to show basically my dog is my business card. So I'll, I'll show them what my dog can do. Yeah. But the biggest thing is not saying a whole lot to their dog and getting it to do things that they're like, man, why is he listening? You, the dog met me five minutes ago. It, it already yeah. Me. yeah. It respects you. And I'm not saying a word. It blows people's minds. That's why the whole whisper, yeah. I think, uh, name came up with Caesar and some of these other guys. Cause they're like, man, he didn't really say anything to the dog. Oh, I whispered something. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I always laugh at that. Yeah, he said a lot, though, you know. He's big on body language, you know, and that helped me out a lot. Like, I literally, like, when I came back from the dog psychology center, I didn't say a word to my dogs yep. for about three weeks for no verbal communication. And the communication are, between us was we, amazing. We told <laughs> you know, kids, like, right? So we're all above 30. I'm assuming Zach is over 30, right? What were we all told? Mm. Yes, well, yeah. Obviously, Jesus. They're the yeah. one with high school kids. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> No, 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 no. Out of high school. I got one that graduated, <laughs> and I got one that's in seventh grade. College. But, but we're from the generation of yeah. actions speak louder than words. That's I was raised on all these little one-line yeah. zigger yeah. mottos that people are, don't listen to now. Yeah. But that was what I was raised with was don't judge a book by its cover. Actions speak louder than words. You know, sticks and stones, all this stuff. Yeah. Right? But less is more. Less you know, this is more. And, and the biggest thing that people do is, like I said also before, is they always want to tell their dog when their dog's doing wrong. They, mm -hmm. they, they, and then, yeah. then they'll, they'll praise the hell out of their dog and sit and watch two movies with it on, on TV, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll confuse the shit way. out of it. Yeah. yeah. The, most, the most reward time and, and affection you're giving that dog is when it's just existing in the house. I'll. I'll have a great yeah. session with Fabio, my personal dog. I'll sit on the ground with him for five minutes afterwards. I'll let him have the reward. I'll, we, we're just bonding, and, and that's only for five minutes. Granted, I'll have him out regardless, and we'll do other things, but it's just, it's just showing the dog affection. I'm, I don't say anything. To him. Your dog only gets five minutes of affection from you, Ian? And then, and, but, and then, but – yeah, but that's not humanizing in the definition of love with hugs and kisses. Some of, some of my working dogs make fun of me because I'll sit there and my dog is all about me. And yeah. Like, oh, he's smothering you. He's just, I'm like, yeah. dude, he loves me. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not a big, I, yeah. I'm using e collar, don't get me wrong, but I'm not teaching my dog things through the e collar. So to have my dog show power and things like that, yeah. obedience, you need to. To like me a little bit, I I need to bring you out of the box, and you're ready to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you're not yeah, yeah. through purely pressure, through you know body pressure, leash pressure, whatever. You have to get that through some type of relationship, whether it's For sure. making food engagement from my hand or sitting on the ground with you after you kick ass. But you know, yeah, you can't tell some of these people anything. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the things, too, is, as you know, the everyday dog owner is that they, they don't know how to determine value in things. You know, I, I've seen a lot of owners, like, they're they're trying to force pet their dogs. Their dog's like, what the fuck away know from me? You know, like. Emotion. That's, that's the biggest part. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring a dog home after a month-long boarding train, and I have to preface to these people prior to me taking the dog out of the truck. Hey. Mm -hmm. We don't say anything yeah. when this dog comes out of the car. Yeah. I'm walking up to you. I'm going to walk Yeah, around. completely ignore in a way. just going to see you and think, oh, there's my get out of jail free card. There's my safety net. I say this to every client, and they go, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, what, I can't touch my, my dog? I have some people get angry at me, and I'm like, you yeah. can, but the dog's going to heal around with you for a little bit first and think that you're not a pushover that you were before because – the dog would give you puppy eyes and you would just cave and, and melt for them. So 
One of the greatest uh, things that I learned from Derek Rose over here at Dallas Canine, you know, when I, my dogs were, my dogs were always so excited when I got home yeah. is because I was kept marking it. And he's like, dude, just ignore your dogs for the first 15, 20 minutes. Go do, just come in the house, do your thing. Yep. No eye contact, no attention, do your thing. Yeah. And it solved the problem my dad was, immediately. So my dad was a real blue collar guy. He owned a roofing company in Pittsburgh where I'm from. And he would come home and, and the dog would get excited when my mom and my brother and I would come home. But she was just kind of like, eh, like we were, we weren't yeah. soft liver, but we weren't, you know, we weren't the best, right? So, yeah. my dad would come home, and my dad had these ladders as a roofer on his truck, and you would hear him pull up in the driveway. So yeah. he, we had a couple of turns in our driveway. You'd hear okay. these babies rattling, and this dog knew exactly when Steve came home. I'll tell you right now, he would come home every day. Yeah. he would go to the same cabinet, grab the same box of milk bones. Right, that's what everyone fed back in the day. He'd give him that milk, delicious, and he would shake this box like three times because he was so happy that she was. She only did it for him though, because he had conditioned this response. Yeah, just like you had done with your dogs and your. You know, what does everyone want to do when they see their dog happy to see them? They want to get happy. Yeah, give high dog. energy back. And yeah. Sometimes it yeah. can be a, to a fault, right? Where the dog doesn't know how to be chill, mm. or mm. the dog will be so stimulated that it'll like emotionally pee on the ground yeah like everyone's like why does my dog pee when i come home yeah. it's like dude you've gotten you you brought the stimulus up so high to where the dog can't even control its bowels yeah you know what i mean like yeah no you're I, right yeah I, I, i've i've had people i've <laughs> imported puppies for people they told me the same thing happens and then they go in, oh well i tried to fix it myself and i used an e-caller to try and correct it you're just gonna make it worse when you do that Literally, yeah. what Stan said is the way to go. You just walk right in. It's the same as if I've got a dog in the crate and I walk in that room and that dog sees me and goes, hey, let me out. Dude, I'm just chilling. You've been in there for five minutes, my guy. I'm coming yeah, right yeah. back through here. I've got dogs all over <laughs> my house, all over, the, all over the property. And they need to realize that every time you see me, you're not going to come out. But when you do come out, I need full power, full energy. Yeah. Well, let's get into some of these questions here in the question box. Zach, and I'll right. start going to the giveaway. I know we've been on this for a minute. Let's see here. Scroll down. We got a lot, man. Oh, yeah. Look, Roger's in here. Rogue Bully Camp says, will there be pizza party after the show? Oh, oh boy. I've had um, too much pizza. Well, make sure he's not falling asleep. I saw another person post where he was asleep again. Aries <laughs> got a bully, he says, how to get my dog to understand. Oh, we already got that. So the I guess they're asking the same questions that they asked on the post. Most people ask the same handful of questions. It's always, yeah. how do I get my dog to stop whining? How do I get my dog to stop pulling? That's the bread and butter of the pet dog world is fixing, you know, how do I get my dog to not be so rude when people come over to the house? Well, here we go. Dog on a leash and make, make a correction. FG Border College says, what are some of your must have training items, platforms, tools, et cetera? I like Cato boards. My buddy Jordan owns that company. It, it's a place for what is Cato boards? But it's not like a Coranda bed. If, if you've ever seen those, it's it's like a fiber. I don't want to okay. call it a fiberglass, but it's like a nice plastic board that has either a turf on top or a or a rubber liner on the top. And I want to start teaching the dog. Maybe I'm teaching it how to go up on something to get paid for a mark and a treat. Um, you know, I could teach the dog how to turn off e-collar pressure with a board like that, whatever the case may be. But I want a board. Um, I want the X-Pen always with the young dog that I can start putting stuff in for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 20 minutes at a time, letting it burn out some energy. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the prong collar. I like using a tab. A lot of the pictures that I have posted up, my dog's wearing a little tab that's six inches long. So I... I could start fading the leash away a little bit. A slip, a slip lead is essential. Okay. I'm so glad that Stan, you starting to do those because it's hard to find a good quality slip lead that is going to hold up. It's going to hold up. You I got one. Me? I got one to test for you when uh, when we as soon as we get I'm inventory in January, I'll send I'm, one out to I'm you. It's a non slip slip lead. Because some of, sometimes the thing will, if you buy one of the cheap ones from some of these stores, yeah. you try and set it to a, a spot and the dog wiggles it down yep. and you've got a mess on your. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah this so, ain't going to happen with these. Stuff like that are pretty much essential. And just uh, essentials would also be quality food. I, I'm so big on diet. And mm-hmm. all, it's not even funny. So you could be, you, you need good genetics, good, good tools like slip and quality made materials. And, but you need a good diet. If your diet isn't right, your ne- your dog's not going to process anything at half the time anyway, because all these fillers and these foods. Yeah. All right. So congratulations uh, to uh, six nine forty five underscore Justin. You won the green buffalo tri- uh, the training tree. Talk about high value food and training tree. That is a pure freeze dried. Mm green buffalo tri- training tree and, um, it's stinks, yeah. so dog type it, and it's healthy it really does dog. stink i hate opening it I, I don't even like touching this shit i try to like shake it out the bag in that like, bowl dude i i go to a butcher i go to a local butcher who does like slaughter and all that stuff yeah and, and they'll pull out, out some tripe for me and they're like can you cut it up we don't want to mess with it and yeah like, i bet <laughs> and i'm like here i yeah. put gloves in down to my elbow well, i don't want I'm, I want to wear a damn lab coat when I'm doing that. One, one thing I like to do is put my hand all in it and then rub my <laughs> finger across my throat until they smell it. my belly button. Uh, <laughs> smell my belly button. She's like, ah! I saw a funny meme about smell my finger the other day. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Pac-9, Prison, uh, Pac-9 Precision LLC says, is there ever a point where you feel you have to accept the way a certain dog is, whether it be a tugger, dog aggression, or separation anxiety, Ooh. et cetera. It, typically, if you if Ooh. you're dealing with stuff like that, um, there if it's so extreme that I've like if I'm a pet dog person, if I'm see if I'm seeking out uh, like people who know what they're looking at mm-hmm. as far as animal behavior, like if yeah. I if I'm the third trainer you've been to and we're all kind of saying the same stuff, maybe the dog isn't a thousand percent upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's dogs that are born with a screw loose that just have neurological issues that make them ex- like over the top stressed. You could walk by their kennel a million times. Some of these dogs want to eat out of every crate that they're in, uh, and yeah. they, like literally damage their mouth because of it. So it, there's certain points where I really have to look at a dog and be like, Hey, the animal aggression on this, on this, you know, game bred pit bull is never going to leave it yeah we're dealing with genetic stuff here yeah um so it, it might just be the the foundation that you're starting with with that animal but um rarely i mean these are like one in a thousand dogs that you can't make a turnaround with but you need to micromanage them and if it goes good for two days you can't just go give that dog the world you need to slowly take your time with certain dogs before you write them off and uh you need to make corrections. I mean, if you're just letting your dog get away with everything and you're not showing it physically sometimes how to steer back on the path, yeah, we're, we're going to have a mess on our hands. So, Amstaff Dad, congratulations. You won the Next Dog Resistance Band. Congratulations. Mm-mm-mm. I'm scrolling through the questions. Let's see. Uh... Here we go. Everybody wants to know about the puppies. Winnie Hunts for Honey says, what's the most important thing to do when raising a puppy? Build engagement through food. Make yourself valuable with engagement. I, I want to do the food from hand every single day. Yeah. It takes three to five minutes. Now, how much, how much of the food uh, – okay. How much of the food, like you, you say, you also feed your dogs in crates. So, how much of the food would you it depends on what offer I'm using. your if you I'm know, offer food each from other. hand? You can use something as cheap as a hot dog that's not going to overly, you know, crush your dog's belly and make it too full. And, and you just yeah. want sh- short quality yeah. sessions. I don't want the dog getting distracted by everything. Uh, just walk yeah. backwards, take a hot yeah. dog, cut it once long ways, and then chop it up you'll have 30 to 40 treats on your hand. And like yeah. I said before, it's not the size of the treat that you're giving it. That's what it's she the said. Fact that they're getting one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if I break, if I break <laughs> a, little, a little piece or a little one piece and I'm, and I'm making a variation on how much I'm giving them, uh, you know, you can, that, that's a 60 to 90 second session with an eight week old puppy. Yeah. Then I feed it. Then I go and put it in the crate what, you know, and it's meal. And then that's like, the grand finale after a session, you know? 
Yeah. One thing I've learned, uh, I learned from uh, Amanda called Joan from a Patriot Canine is that, you know, when you're doing stuff like that too, be in an area where there's not a bunch of toys and where the dog can go, you know, wander off and get interested in other things. Like isolated. have it like basically a small isolated. room where there's no nothing on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Isolated. This is a, yeah. now that you just said that it, it's making me bring up another point too. Every house that I go to for a behavior modification has toys. Everywhere. <laughs> toys everywhere. <laughs> I don't know how you can buy all these toys. The, the dogs don't even look at the toys. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like if a dog was yeah. running in the woods and it ran by a leaf. That's how much these dogs care about these toys. They don't give a damn about them. They buy every toy in the store. When a any person who's involved with dogs knows that there's a handful of legitimate toys out there. And most of these toys, I don't want to leave with my dog all the time anyway. So make, make I, I wouldn't even let the toys be out unless we are engaging with that toy. Yeah. Name it. Name, yeah, for sure. Think, Think about before yeah. you got involved with dogs heavily and think about how many people's dogs actually can play fetch with the owner. It's, yeah. it, it's, it, was, it, it was almost non-existent yeah. with just regular pet dogs. These dogs would just had no value in a toy. I pull a toy out for anybody over here, whether it's a Spaniel or a Shepherd or a Roddy. <coughs> they know what time it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I want to be able to exercise my yeah. dog with my ex vest th with a toy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that I could just sit in a chair and throw it. I can go on a hike with them, whatever, but I'm going to get so much more out of my walks, my playtime with an X vest on. If I have just this, as simple as a retreat, Stan, we were talk talking about cast for that Cocker Spaniel. I can sit in a chair with him for an hour and throw the ball. I bet you he'll only do it for 15, 20 minutes <laughs> when I put the fifth dog collar on him or a little small X vest. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that's something that having value in toys and engagement with your dog will help with. Everyone says, "Well, I don't have anywhere to go on hikes." Dude, you can sit in your front yard and throw the ball for fifteen minutes, throw a podcast in, and just jam out. You know, there's no excuses. To exercise <laughs> yeah. What's up? What's up, Art or Art Ortiz, Dog Fit Dallas? Um, so pack or P A K nine precision underscore LLC. Congrats. You won the Congrats. Another great tool. Aries got a bully says, what's the best tactic to build a strong recall from scratch? Food from hand, just like you have a puppy at eight weeks old, just literally walk backwards and say the dog's name. Mm -hmm. And then w once the dog is glued to you and doesn't want to leave your side, have your girl or your kid or someone around you, Hold the dog, make five feet distance, 10 feet distance, and then you go, Scooby, Scooby. And the dog's like, damn, you know, I've been getting, I've been hearing my name and getting paid. I want to get to that faster. Yeah. And then when the dog is showing like it wants to be like yeah. a horse at the derby and burst out the gate, that's when you let it go. You just say the dog's name. That's how you build the dog through opposition reflex to want to go forward and get paid. It's like, oh. I want to get to him, but I can't. And then you let him go. And then the, your dog is running like it's never ran before. Whereas before, normally your dog kind of mopes over yeah. and picks up the food. But you, you just have to release the dog at the right time when it's at its peak of wanting to get, get free, you know? Mm, Rescue Ship says, what breed would you recommend to a first-time pet owner? It depends on their lifestyle. If, I, yeah. if it's an active person that lives a little bit more rural, go get a lab. Go get a well-bred lab, English bred or American bred. So the big, big blocky type being the English bred that are more mellow, but still want to go do things and have more food drive than toy drive, or go get something from some hunting stock that wants to play ball with you all day if you have the time for that. Yeah. But remember, when you're choosing a breed of dog, don't just yeah. choose it by what it looks like. I want to have a yeah, I was gonna dog say that I... lays in my house that I like to look at, but I also need to know what goes into mentally stimulating and physically stimulating. Yeah, his lifestyle. I think a lot of times that's a big problem, that people just pick a puppy off of pure cuteness and not putting any thought to the fact that this what dog... It's yeah, this dog's a lab. It needs to run a lot. It may want to swim some. It's going to have high energy. And if you're not stimulating it, then he's going to probably tear some shit up in the house. You know? Yeah. 
And you'd be surprised how many even labs and dogs that are just in your mind to not be aggressive dogs oh, yeah. that yeah. can become aggressive through just lack of yeah. boredom and lack of yeah. uh, entertainment and, and exercise. I mean, another one of those one-liner sayings that we grew up listening to was a happy dog is a, a tired dog is a happy dog. Mm -hmm. so my dog, dogs love life when they're passed, passed out. That's when I know that I've done well that day. I'm like, man, he's... I'll be playing ball with a dog. Yeah. Man, man, he's about to sleep good tonight. What's better What's better than when you're a youngster and you're <laughs> back from practice or something like that, or you just finish the football game and you come home and take that nap on the couch like you've never slept before in your life? You know what I mean? You, We can offer that to a dog yep. multiple times a week. No, yeah, very true, man. Uh, Faith Lynn 11 yeah. says, what is the hardest breed to train? Mm. You can only this is subjective. One. This is subjective, but huskies. They're gonna get you now. Don't you stop. That's it. It's over with. Tomorrow your Facebook and Instagram is gonna have husky people. Oh, they coming come, for you, bro. Come and get me. Come and get me. <laughs> nah, keep going. But dive into the, it, man. The, the huskies are so independent typically, and they're sometimes a little snobby when it comes to food from hand. Yeah. Um I've dealt with uh -huh. pit mixes of every breed you can imagine. And that's kind of the one that can be extremely vocal, just so independent. If I have a half acre backyard fenced in, that's the dog that you kind of need to corral sometimes and get back in. Um, I would say huskies just from every one of them that I've encountered. It's like, you're about to make me earn this money. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They're like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Oh, my God. Why do you think that is? Is it just because they're, the, the genetics as far as just like Everything the way they're designed or bred? Or? I, I like strong dogs like Fabio yeah. because he has high prey drive, because he has these things. This is all – you can't manufacture the level of prey drive that some of these dogs have. Now, th they need these dogs to be able to be, you know, just running for, you know, a long time in these Iditarods and stuff. For, um, and then sleep in the snow by themselves, by the uh, you know, and get know, buried in the we're snow. We're doing that. That's the breed yeah. that I yeah. want. But if I'm if I'm talking about a dog that lives in, you know, a residential suburban neighborhood, I don't want that type of dog. I want something that is going to naturally want to engage with me at a high level. And personally, from my experience, that's not my go-to dog if I was to go grab one. So yeah. Yeah, or even having that breed here mm -hmm. in Texas where it's so Carolina, hot, you know, it's so kind of like, it, what's it, the it's point? It's almost shameful to have a dog. Yeah. Like, that even ha even has a flat face, let alone all that hair, you know? you got to think about how much how much you can run yeah. that dog, how much the breathing might affect the, a French bulldog or something along those lines, you know? These are all genetic traits that we have to think about when we're dealing with a dog in front of us. Yeah. I think like trainers are now becoming more aware. I know a couple of uh, a trainer friends who that's what they specialize in is pairing up owners who yeah. you know are looking for dogs and pairing no, them up with the correct breed. I, I mean, think that's really such is. a valuable. Yeah, it really uh, is, man. I, I think that's a lot of the times why we see so many dogs back in humane societies or shelters is because they just get a dog that the neighbor had and they're like oh he's super cute or like you know they go to the fucking pet smart they got one or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and there's no knowledge of what the genetic side of the dog's background is they don't know if the dog is a chill dog if it needs to be working if it's a protection you know all of this so then it does something that they're not okay with and the first thing they want to do is get rid of it because they don't know how to control it oh he chewed he chewed on the furniture yeah, yeah. get rid of him get, get, they're so quick to bail yeah and, and just a, it, the problem is people look at a dog like it's a an item or yeah. a robot so yeah. they look at they look at yeah. that expensive purse or they look at that nice car or whatever and they think it's just a thing to have and not a living breathing thing with a soul yeah. uh yeah you know what i mean and that and that's what <laughs> yeah and um, Believe it or not, some people just think dogs come fully equipped with the know what to do's. You know, they want like, their two months old to act like a yeah, girl. That's yeah. What, that's that's like I need to start putting that on shirts. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy how often that that comes into it. And when I first got that Rottweiler, I mean, dude, I was like, like 
looking into like the the history of the breed, how they mm-hmm. ended up being called the Rottweiler because yeah. they stopped yeah. in Rottweil Germany with the Romans, and they kind of a couple of them lingered back and all yeah. this stuff. And I want to know, you know, why did they cut the tails off of these dogs? Because they were carting and and bringing mm. stuff for the butchers and for the dairy farmers, and the tail was getting in the way, and they were probably getting happy tail and knocking it on stuff. So they were like, hey, let's just start snipping these things from the get. Um, you know, things, yeah, things like very that. interesting. I, I yeah. Every breed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but but when people will bring a dog to me and I, I had a German short haired pointer that was not getting mentally stimulated and it lived in. I, I look I look at dog training as everything needs to be black and white to a dog and there needs to be a clear distinction of what you can't do and what you can do. When the mm-hmm. dog lives in that gray area in the middle, it, it, it's just commotion, right? So this German short-haired pointer wasn't getting enough yeah. exercise because they couldn't get it to stop pulling and all this stuff, and then it just became a mess. Once we threw some structure back in, we made it all good, but, you know, it's structure is the key at the end of the day, regardless of what breed you're yeah. going with. Yeah. Yeah, we a couple got more one. questions. We got we got enough what's for one more. Way? Uh, Schoolboy Q says, "What's a good way to train a show dog not to be shy? Basically, mm-hmm. how can you build confidence? Food again? I, I, I would I would make food. I mean, food is something that everyone needs. I wish someone yeah. could dangle some food in front of me and control my diet the way that we yeah. can with these dogs. I'll go pig out, but if someone was like, "Hey, go do this," if if, if I'm down bad, right? Like when I was an apprentice, I was making next to nothing, and I would be stoked if I could go get a little Caesar's pizza. Yeah. If someone were to tell me, "Hey, I'm about to take you to yeah. like In and Out Burger or you know somewhere to get some good food," at, you know, at, at that place that I'm in, all you got to do is these little bit of cho- like when your dad would say, "Hey, if you do well or do this, we'll go get ice cream." Yeah. It's the same. It's the same type of deal. I want to. I want to use the power of food. We we all get hungry. A dog is going to get hungry. The problem is people don't think about when they want to pull the treats out. They do it when it's convenient for them. If I know that a dog needs to eat, I'm going to pull out a high value treat that they don't need to sit there and chew on, like a hot dog, like some ground meat, and let that dog realize that, man, this guy brings good good stuff to the to the table. Um, and you can do a lot with that through food. But we don't want to talk too much. We just want to lead by example and use the food as a uh, a confidence builder. Yeah. But it has to be high value. You can't be using some cheap stuff. You pull some tripe out, as stinky as that stuff is, mm-hmm. guess what? You're going to get your dog's attention. Yeah, I think hot dogs are one of those things too, man. Like, man, you get yourself yeah. a good high Dude, value I'll, hot dog. Those yeah. dogs are crazy over it. The good ones, the beef ones from Costco, and I can buy the bar s cheap dollar pack. If a dog is hungry, it doesn't matter what the yeah. hot dog is. My dogs go crazy over cheese, man. I get a slice of cheese, break it four ways between the dog and boom. Fact. But Absolutely. that's just something my dad always did as a kid. So it was like, you know. Um, we would do lunch meat every once yeah. in a while. So I, my dad my dad would pull out a, a piece of roast beef or he would pull, pull out something like that. And I learned real quickly, and I've started to do it with puppies before I even in, in, introduce them to cut up hot dog. I'll I'll just go over towards the little puppy pen and I'll just put poke a little piece of uh, lunch meat through there. Yeah. And then they they go, ooh, look how accessible yeah. it is, and they bite right through it. And then I'll pull a puppy out and I'll I'll cut little strands or I'll shred little strands and I'll I'll poke it through. Uh, this looks crazy. Uh, I'll put it. I'll put what it, is I'll put it what's going on? <laughs> I'll put it in my hand and let the dog realize that it can push and grab food out of my hand. Before I even start lowering dogs or anything, I need you to, to understand that in my palm is going to be some food. That way, when I pull stuff out, they, they just want to get yeah. pushy into the palm of my hand. I'll get a dog, not literally, but I could get a dog to walk over some hot coals if it has enough faith that there's value coming out of my hand yeah. as a food lure or whatever. So uh, if I'm training a show dog, I, I literally you know, it's- lead it up pet it calmly, not get too vocal, and just let it understand to, to stack or and push into my hand. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the whole thing with your dad in, in the treat box. I think a lot of pet owners, they don't under, they subconsciously, they don't understand that they, they have remarkable recall. Every time they go to the kitchen, 
and they pull out that treat bag. Yeah. What does the as dog do? They fly the into the jar, kitchen, they yeah. hear it, and they sit down like, whoa, what's up? Yeah. Take that same concept, you know, well, as you're going for these walks. It's like with my dad. So he was, your daily training. He was, he was a military dog handler for probably 10 years of my life. Mm-hmm. And that's something he would do every single morning. He would go in the kitchen. He would make an egg sandwich. The dogs knew when he was making this egg sandwich that he was getting the cheese. But the thing was is he would not let them get it until they were calmly sitting and he was finished eating. So yep. he would do his whole routine. Then once he would get done, he would turn around and be like, good boy, and give the dog the piece of cheese. You know what I'm saying? So My it's kind of the same. My friend does the exact same thing yeah. every rain, hail, sleet, or snow. Yeah. He, buys, he buys lunch meat when he does it because he doesn't want the dog eating his good bacon sandwich or whatever. This guy wakes up every morning and makes half a pound of bacon. Shout out my boy, Ed, right? <laughs> Ed, Ed, will, Ed, Ed will wake up and make a plate of bacon or he'll make a little sandwich or something like that. And the dogs already know what time it is. He just wakes up and comes out of the bedroom. They're, yeah. they're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And he'll go over to the same seat on the couch. He's got his little table he brings over in front of him. And you've never seen a more patient dog than these dogs just like peasants just – waiting for yeah. the king to just give it to him and he does but he like you said they have to be beyond calm and relaxed yeah. he's yeah. not paying them and marking them or paying them he doesn't even know what training is it's just a guy that lives with a girl who's obsessed with dogs right and but he knows i'm not gonna yeah. pay them if they're yeah. acting up that's yeah. train that's training yeah that's training right there facts <laughs> all right so Vixen underscore bully underscore camp. Um, is it possible a dog can be prejudiced to one dog in the house and get along if with the If it rest? notices that a dog's like weaker, uh, a weaker link, or maybe that dog has overcorrected it, maybe there's a couple facts factors that could play into that. If there's a grown dog in the house that's older and mm-hmm. doesn't going to take any crap from anyone, they might be a little sharper with that dog as a puppy's being rambunctious. And that can stick with a dog for quite a while. Uh, I've had dogs – come into me for training that only react to small little white foo-foo dogs um, because as as a puppy that that little foo-foo dog kind of bounced on that dog so they always correlate that little white fluffy dog to that dog that brought that negative uh, reaction to them but it could be some little stuff like that it could be you know uh, dogs speak through correction so maybe that dog corrected that dog at one point mm-hmm. it could be a million different things or that one's just not as fun to play with as the rest yeah i kind of noted like i've been telling stan i i got a situation where i got two puppies i got two brothers right now they're eight months coming on nine months one of them when the older males are not in the room tries to be like almost alpha to everybody in the room yeah. like he barks at the females he barks at his little brother but the moment that one of the big dogs comes out he, he will kind of small. Yeah, he goes small. sit under the table or he'll kind of hide. Well, one of the older males, I, I can notice that he senses that and he continuously fucks That's with true. him. Like he'll yep. just yep. follow him around and, and be like, leave him alone, leave him alone. Yep. But it's almost like you said, it's like he becomes weak in the situation because he's not actually the alpha. He wants to be, but when the big dogs come, he's like, nah, I'm just going to chill. And then the one it's male. It's like this with people. It's like yeah. this with people too. Start it or up. But it's like this with people no, good. When, when, when it's like, are, are you going to keep that same energy? You know what yeah. I mean? Like people act real tough when they're yeah. really like people they're comfortable yeah. around. But are you that way all the time? Yeah. I'm this way all the time. Ask anyone that knows me. Yeah. I'm always talking a lot. I've always, I'm yeah. always fluctuating my volume a little bit. I'm cracking jokes and I'm blunt as can be. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my, my club yeah. members have a safe word for me if I'm talking too much. They're like, oh, pineapple, pineapple. You know what I mean? But but but, I, but, I, but, but, that's because, but that's because but that's because I never change. I never switch. I've been this way since I was in grade school. Yeah. you know what I mean. Um, but yeah. you know, well, at least we know now. If we're ever around him, stand just you know, just scream out pineapple. Just be like, hey, 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 pipe down, pipe down. Pineapple. But uh, but that but that's the same thing with dogs. Is you know you have a a, a certain type of dog when it's always the same. Whether it's around certain dogs or certain yeah. environments, a lot of dogs act real strong at the house. Yeah. They come over here or they go somewhere new, yeah. go to Savannah or wherever we go, they don't keep that same body language. And you can yeah. see a dog if it's walking tall or if it's walking small. 
I mean, that Very true. tells me so much about yeah. a dog. If I'm evaluating a dog for police, if I'm going to pick a puppy, I don't even look at how they're biting. If I know the pedigree is nice and I'm looking at a little eight-week, seven-week-old puppy, yeah. mm -hmm. I just want the, the boldest little turd in there. I don't give a damn about anything. Yeah. I might drop something randomly and see if the dog skimpers back or if the dog goes and investigates it. I want the bold puppy. You know what I mean? And and I might even take it away yeah. like I did with these two labs that I got for detection. I, you know, it's kind of – not to interrupt you. But go ahead, finish that off, and I'm going I'm I'm to add on to that. Environment <clears throat> somewhere on the same property that they lived at, but that I knew that they had never been because the guy's like, oh, they've never left the pen. Perfect. I think Take them one at a time. I just set them on the ground, you know, a distance away from where the other uh, puppies were, so they were out of sight. And I just, I just said, "Come on!" Yeah. And I just started walking. The puppies that just will naturally walk with me and not stand there frozen, we could put you in the truck right now. Mm -hmm. The one that stands there for two minutes, yeah, and is just too scared to move. Guess what? You're not my type of puppy. Yeah. I, I don't want to have to train the natural ability. Yeah, to it's. Engage. I can enhance it. You see the difference there, Zach? It's kind of like with the with the American bullies. As a, when you're looking at a litter of puppies, you're evaluating them based off of structure in most cases. Then you kind of go to personality. Where in this case, this is why it's all about personality. I think fail is because, and this is what happened. This is what ruined the German Shepherd and the Doberman and a couple other breeds. Ruined. Ruined for all those. Yeah. For all those who have German Shepherds, Ian, Colin Foy, K9, go ahead and, and I, I, go and try I to cancel German him right Shepherds. now. <laughs> I got my start uh, when I separated from yeah. my mentor with breeding German Shepherds because mm -hmm. I came back from the Netherlands with one. Um, the problem is everyone's breeding for – and this is what you get with most people call you to ask for a puppy. They go, I want the, the Spaniel that has the little bit of brown on it. I want yeah. the, I want the – I want the black German Shepherd. I want, <laughs> yeah. I want the big, the one, the biggest puppy. I want this. They're not looking at what their lifestyle yeah. is, all these other things. I do all the puppy picking. News flash. Yeah. Anyone that ever wants yep. a puppy from me, guess what? You're going to call. I want to ask you what your experience is. I want to see video proof. It's We're coming up on 2023. You've got a smartphone. You're watching this right now. You have a smartphone. Yeah. I want to see footage of you working that dog that you currently got or some other dog or whatever. And my apprentice that I have right now, first thing she said, oh, I got a lab. He does dock dogs. He jumps 29 feet, whatever the hell it is. All right, we'll bring him over. This is, this is going to show me what your dog is capable of. Show me what your dog can do other than jump off his dog. Yeah. Show me him do some obedience. Whatever the dog knows, just yeah. show me. And, um, yeah. you know, it's just – I'm getting rambling now, but it's just pineapple. You know, it pineapple, crazy. Yeah, pineapple. Basically, pineapple. Basically, this is a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that totally makes sense. You know, like uh, it's well. Speaking of dock diving, like how much more are you seeing people coming to you for like dogs? You know, to compete in like stuff We've like fast cat and dog sports dog and, and, and like because fly. they need to build the, the confidence in the dog. To go to an event like that, some of these some of these events are crazy. They're crazy the amount of people that are there. If your yeah. dog's a little weekend warrior and you bring it to the city to go do it, I mean, some of these dog dog events are yeah. literally in a city square. Like they go hard, mm -hmm. and and you know they just got uh, yeah they just joined forces with the sled dog thing with the Iditarod. So I mean they're doing big events. There's people coming out of the woodwork to come bring their dog yeah. there. And it's either a shit show or, you know, you've got the star. And people need to get these dogs confident. So I had a poorly bred Belgian Malinois come to me, and the dog wouldn't even look at a toy. And, and we had to build just environmental confidence to where this dog can go to these events and want to just – this person didn't need the best dog there. They just wanted something to do with their dog to, to be able to enhance their relationship. Mm -hmm. And this dog now – will jump you know 15 feet in the water and they couldn't be happier with it you know so we get a lot of just basically yeah, behavior yeah. modification in a sense where we're needing to build a little bit of an ego into a dog because it just walks around as a mental midget and we need to change that you know i need i need a dog with the confidence of king kong without having the bad manners of king kong if that makes any sense yeah very true 
No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ian, man, this is a great show, man. We appreciate the value you bring on. I, we, got, we definitely have to do part two, bring you on, uh, you know, in 2023. I think uh, everybody's loving this, man. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of messages saying, great, you know, keep forever. going, great uh, information. They love the value. I feel like I'm rambling and stuff. But. Yeah. No, no, man. We love that. We love that because, I mean, that's the whole point is, uh, you know, they hear us talk all the time and to bring guests like you who bring so much value, you know, man, like yeah. uh, it's just an honor, you know, to have you come on our show and to provide our audience that because we need more stuff like this. And, you know, we're going to this is one of the reasons why we um, started True Beach Tra Trainer episodes. And I'm like, man, you know, you were the first person I thought about a long time ago. I said, hey, man, would you come on? Because. I know the type of uh, energy you bring, the value you bring, and the knowledge. So you guys make sure you go over there and give him a follow. Um, don't harass yeah. him all the time with a billion questions, I'm sure. But, you know, like he's willing to help you out, man, if you guys have any, you know, questions. And, and definitely, you know, um, we're, in, we're in a technology world. So if you're going to send him anything, send him a video of, you know, of the situation. It's and all hard that, to you know, break you know, things go down. From there. But, man, thank you again, Ian. You, well, my dog does this. If I can see it, I can help pinpoint some stuff. A couple of little changes can make the biggest difference in people's lives. So, Very if, yeah, true, if man. anyone needs any help, just let me know. What's the evolution? What What's the evolution of uh, of your vision? You know, you know, now with you know things being online, you're growing your brand and your uh, in your you know your product and your brand and stuff. Are, are is are you planning on doing what a lot of trainers are doing and doing like online I would, um, I would uh, training and stuff that like idea. that? Um, it needs to be a little bit more fine tuned, I think, with how we're able to get the footage. Yeah. If someone can stand there and, and and follow a dog around, it's hard when you're just propping something up and you have to stay in frame. And then yeah. you can't really be that much in the moment with your dog. If I'm trying to tell you stuff to do and you're worried about staying in frame on a video, that's a, and it's less personable. I, I, sometimes I need to get hands on and, and work what's in front of me. Yeah. I mean, it's important. I mean, you got to have both, right? And, you know, I say initially, you know, if you can start getting an eval online and then, you know, you still got to put your hands on dogs, man. I get flown out to the West Coast. Yeah. To go do maintenance training on dogs. I get, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm near Atlanta. I'm near all these bigger airports. And now there's so much grand transport, ground transport that people will literally spend a thousand dollars just to get their dog to me so that I can really just – yeah, and, and, and most of the time it's nothing crazy, but things that just need to be done efficiently. It, yeah, it, it might not seem like rocket science. To I mean, I'm not a handy guy at all. As, as blue collar as my father was, I'm not that guy, right? So I call in a specialist for certain things, just like I would want to go to the gym and work on my fitness. I'm I'm going to hire a trainer if I'm very green and don't know what I'm doing. So I like to look at things like that with certain trades for sure. I think, you know, a lot of it has it has to do with just dog owners doing way too much and, and you know, having someone like you come in and simplify it. It's like, no, Ian, no, 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 Ian, no, stop, Ian, you're talking, yeah. no, yeah. Ian, instead of just like yeah. pineapple. Pineapple needs to transfer yes. over to people with their pineapple. dogs. And if people need to look back at this and think, man, do I need to pineapple myself? Because I'm doing, too, I'm, I'm talking and I'm not getting through to anything. Yeah. People yeah. think that their dog knows how to sit yeah. when they tell it to sit 10 to 20 times and their dog sits on the 10th or 20th yeah. time. Yeah. No. The dog yeah. just ran out With of the hand motion. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. The dog just runs out of things to do. It just offers a sit like, what the hell? Why do you keep talking to me? And repeat well, yeah. 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 Well, maybe if I sit. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, there's, there's hasn't been yeah. clear like conditioning to anything, you know? No, that's very true. Um, for those yeah. of y'all that's saying yeah. you're tuning in for the first time, we appreciate it. Um, he is not a regular; he is a guest. But you can tune in. We're on look. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Play. We're on Apple Podcasts. You can look us up. It's called True Beast Podcast. Uh, we do episodes on Mondays where we bring on bully breeders, bully handlers, uh, bully entrepreneurs. Uh, and now we're starting True Beast Trainers, where we're bringing on professional dog trainers. Um, we got a veterinarian that comes through. So. This is evergreen content. You can find it on all podcast platforms and YouTube. Very true. And YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube. Go subscribe there too. So again, where can they find you, Ian? Again, on, um, on I know that they can find you at Convoy K9 here. The where on other platforms? The easiest way to get a hold of me is typically Facebook. I've I'm got my website about to be under construction for the new year. I actually want to talk to you, Stan, about that some more. 
and getting my stuff a little bit more easy to use. Okay. But Facebook has been my bread and butter since I started in the dogs. It's such a good uh, communicator. It's so easy to send videos and stuff. Yeah. I like the Instagram platform, but it's yeah. hard to get the in-depth stuff that I can get as a, as a fan of dogs myself through the way that Facebook's platform is. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Ian Josowitz, yeah. if it's in the banner on any of your posts, you can see how yeah. to spell my crazy last name. Um, but reach out to me on there. If you've got, if you're interested in a dog, if you're interested in training, I know everyone that we would need to network to help make certain things happen. Even if you're not in my area, I know the California guys like Oscar and Joseph and all the top guys to go yeah. to. So you don't have to mess around with the riffraff because Dog training is weird, right? Like, there's, it, it's all like bias on what 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 you like. Yeah, you know. So you've got people in yeah. Texas, like Derek, for example, who who does a lot of the same stuff that I do: breeding, training, and raising protection dogs, police dog stuff, all that type of stuff. That might be a trainer better fit for a certain type of person. Now you might want someone that's going to do stuff with your bulldog to be a little bit. It, 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 different type of training so there's a type of trainer for every dog um and, and it's just finding the people that actually have experience and aren't you know they hung a shingle once and now they're a roofer you know we, we want people who really know what they're talking yeah. about putting up the quality stuff and not all of this you know not it, it, there needs to be a balance with the training that you're using very true yeah well, thank you again, Ian, man. Thank you all for tuning in, man. And as always, Team X Dog Strong, love y'all. Right. And I